All right, as I take the name of the panel, they are requested to make their way towards the stage. We're going to start with uh, a person who is currently working as an assistant vice president in infrastructure, railway and metro construction warehousing at Invest India. He's a chartered accountant with a diverse range of experience in client servicing, roles at reputable accounting and advisory firms. With over nine years of experience, he has worked on assignments spanning the entire spectrum of investment, advisory, mergers, and acquisitions. Valuation, due diligence, financial, commercial, or tax, and lead advisory. He also has experience in international taxation and transfer pricing, including benchmarking, cross-border transaction, TT advisory, and litigation support. Apart from assurance and accounting, he is Sri Karan Sethi, AVP in West India. Can we have you here on the stage, sir? Shall I also request Narendra Shah, sir, to welcome him with the bouquet of flowers? Uh, they will make the setting. You can welcome him. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here. A huge round of applause for Sri Karan Sethi. We are going to have him who is a BCom graduate, MBA finance and associate member, member of the Institute of Cost and Management Accountants of India, ACMA. With over 32 years of experience in finance, HR, administration, he has worked with reputed organizations like Delhi Metro Real Corporation, Maha Metro and National Fertilizers Limited, where he introduced the SAP system. Uh, SAP systems for finance and HR. He has also been involved in arranging funds from various international, uh, international funding agencies for metro rail projects. He is Sri S. Sivamathan. He is the director of finance from Bangalore Metro Rail Corporation Limited. Can we? He will join us in a short period of time. I would like to call. Um, Shri M. Vijay Kumar, Joint Advisor, Niti Aayog, works in infra steel industry and over seven years of experience in the transport vertical. With a strong educational background, including a Bachelor of Engineering degree and MBA from the Department of Management Studies at IIT, a Bachelor of Laws from Delhi University, Mr. M. Vijay Kumar brings us a diverse set of skills and expertise at his role. We welcome you, sir. With a round of applause, of course. Shall we also have Mr. Sulab Goel? He is a highly accomplished professional with extensive experience in infrastructure consulting. He holds a PGDBM in finance and is currently serving as a director at Ernst & Young in New Delhi. He possesses more than 16 years of vast experience working with large public and private clients such as uh, uh, such as uh, when we talk about the client, they are working with the World Bank, Asian Development Bank, ADB, JBIC, across sectors such as transportation, real estate, and tourism. So we are very glad to have him on board with us. A huge round of applause for him as well. He is Mr. Sulab Goyal. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Now I'm going to call Mr. Rakesh Prasad. He is an accomplished business leader with over 25 years of vast experience in project sales, architects, consultants, and strategy formulation. He currently serves as head strategic business development and marketing at APL Apollo. Prior to his current position, he held various positions in prominent companies like Maharashtra Seamless Limited, Zindal Panther, and Jindal Pipes Limited. With a strong focus of maximizing business profitability and boosting turnovers, he has excelled in addressing top-end stakeholders and streamlining business operations. We are very glad to have him on board with us. He is Mr. Rakesh Prashad, Strategic Business Development and Marketing Head, APL Apollo. We are very glad to have you. Going to call the next person who is known as Sri Jugal Kishore Bhatti is now working as Chief Advisor at Simbro's Clean Tech Private Limited. Mr. Jugal Kishore Bhatti is a highly accomplished civil engineering professional and has recently retired as additional general manager civil from uh, RITES Limited. With over 35 years of vast experience in various civil projects, he holds a BE in civil engineering, MTech in building science and construct construction management from IIT Delhi and an MBA in finance from IGNO. 
He also possesses an international executive diploma in project management from GWU USA. While working with the rights, Mr. Bhatti gained a rich experience in the diverse range of projects, including metro projects, highways, airports, ropeways, and integrated check posts, along with India International Border, among others, to name a few. When well, I'm gonna call Mr. Jugal Kishore Bhatti, he also will be moderating this entire panel. Can we have a huge round of applause for Mr. Bhatti? Everybody. So looking forward to have an amazing panel ahead. We are going to have a lot of information and knowledge from all the speakers. We are very glad to have all of you with us today and would request all of you to stay back for a while so that we can also join, we can also meet, greet, talk over the networking lunch. So please be there. We're gonna start our lunch at 2 p.m. In the meanwhile, let's proceed towards the panel. Now getting over to Mr. Bhatti. Yes. Hello. Thank you very much. Yeah. In fact, we are waiting one of the panelists. That is why we have kept that chair. Ma'am, uh, anchor Varsha Singh, I won't give you time to wait for the panel discussion. And I will level, try, I will try my level best to complete the panel discussion within 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, we have already introduced the, all the sp uh, panelists, but I can share, tell in short that before I start, let me tell that we have a diverse set of speakers, experts, who possess a vast ex knowledge in national, international funding, sustainable urban development, metros, infrastructure, connectivity, BD, marketing, financial modeling, chartered content, and international taxation, etc. The topic of uh, the panel discussion is transport infra financing, public private partnership, increased revenue systems, and cost cutting measures, and challenges in financing for metro RT, RRTS and HRCR projects in India. Now, uh, Mr. Sulab Goyal. Mr. Goyal is having 18 years experience with a large public sector private client with international donor agencies like World Bank, ADB, JBIC in transportation and real estate and tourism sectors. Was also involved in successful closure of major PPP projects. Mr. Goyal, uh, this will be a question to Mr. Goyal. Uh, sir, PPP projects, often involve private sector arranging and providing finance. As you are aware that so far the economic infrastructure projects are concerned, such as airports and toll roads, the most of the projects are successful. So far as the metro and other social infrastructure projects are concerned, they are not so successful, which includes the MRTS, water supply, solid waste management, health and education, etc., you are aware. My question is, can you express your views that why PPP metro projects are not successful when a lot of metro projects are either in progress or in pipeline? Secondly, what are the remedial measures? You please try to finish your reply within three minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, in terms can you hear me? In terms of uh, the infrastructure financing is concerned, transport sector as a whole is an important sector and it is actually the largest uh, contributor in terms of the, the plan that we have in terms of the infrastructure financing is concerned. Uh, like sir has mentioned about uh, different sectors has uh, uh, experienced different PPP projects. So uh, largely if we talk about the different sectors, Road is one sector where the PPP sector has been explored a lot. And there has been successful model starting from BOT annuity to BOT toll. And now they have evolved over a period of time in terms of HAM and TOT also. The, uh, sir, your first question uh, specific to metro sector. Uh, the reason of uh, PPP sector still in a nascent stage in uh, metro sector is uh, 
the first important part is unlike different infrastructure sector a uh, metro is a capital intensive uh, sector it require lot of capital visa vis uh, if we talk about the road sector or other airport sector and recovery of that if we talk about the fare box recovery uh, visa vis the capital investment as well as the uh, onm uh, revenue is concern it is still not enough specifically for the tier 1 and tier 2 cities in if we talk about the delhi metro uh, majority of the line are still operationally profitable but if we talk about majority of the uh, cities where the metros are concerned it is still uh, need to see the more ridership majority of the ridership are in the range of 50000 to 2 lakh uh, passengers per day so that need to be gone up so that is one reason why this is still not doable and uh, be it any sector uh, i come from a pri private sector i can say and we had a lot of discussion with uh, different investor approach is same uh, irrespective of the sector uh, they are here for the making money so be it any sector until and unless their equity irr or the uh, expected rate of return is not enough they are not going to invest so that need to be we need to understand that aspect so if we have to make and sir coming to your second question of the remedial part if we really need to make metro project as a successful ppp project then we need to introduce more sweetness to make that project viable uh, right now majority of the uh, viability is related to the fare box which is the passenger ridership and there is a huge difference between what we are projecting as a in the dpr and what is the actual traffic right now in uh, majority of the line so we need to fill that gap through either a providing more non fare box revenue sources or through a different real estate component or any kind of different subsidy that is how we can make uh, these projects more sustainable and more viable thank you mr goel well explained now we have another panelist uh, shri rakesh prashad he is gm bd and marketing at at apl apollo mr prashad mr prashad is alumni of iim kolkata with 20 year experience in bd strategy formulation brand promotion and leadership his domain expertise is steel pipes cement fertilizer tires etc mr prashad my question is apl apollo is the leader in steel pipes and tubes and since last 35 years has grown up tremendously how apl apollo being a private player be helpful in cost cutting of the projects and at the same time can add value in various civil metro and other infrastructure projects your time starts now try, try to finish within 3 to 4 minutes um thank you mr bhatti uh for that humble introduction and uh, i am pleased to share uh, that i am i am one of the panelists and which is which is supported by very diverse functions like strategy planning finance infrastructure so when we are talking about infrastructure uh, we all would agree that uh, in or in order to make our economy to the extent of 5 trillion uh, us dollars uh, our honorable uh, prime minister is is working day and night and infrastructure is the only area through which we we all know that we can achieve this target in a very very short time you know and the the discussion right now is infrastructural financing so <clears throat> mr bhati uh, in order to answer your question of cost cutting and how apl apollo can add value to the existing infrastructural projects so let me create a context you have provided me 5 minutes i would uh, try to finish it in 5 minutes time you know 
So I would uh, just go back uh, to, the, uh, to who we are uh, as an organization and why we are here attending this conference. So who we are, APL Apollo is the largest uh, producers of steel pipes and tubes in the country with around 3.5 million tons, 12 manufacturing locations, 800 distributors, 50,000 dealers, and 1 lakh fabricators, supported by 28 branch offices all over the country. With an annual turnover exceeding 16,000 crores, the market capitalization almost about touching around 40,000 crores. So this is the background. <clears throat> now, your question, how APL Apollo can be instrumental in cutting the cost, you know. So when I said that APL Apollo is the largest uh, producer of steel pipes in the country, so we obviously and we naturally enjoy the large economies of scale, which we pass it on to the customer, you know. So that is number one, cost cutting. For the, for the ultimate customer and for the ultimate client. My second submission is, since we are supported with 28 branch offices all over the country, 12 manufacturing locations, we have a competitive edge, and that is, we are very, very close to the, we are very close to the customer, you know, unlike my competitive friends, you know. So that is the next competitive edge which APL Apollo has, and the benefit goes to the customer, you know, customer or the client. Thirdly, the technology which we are using for manufacturing structural, structural steel, in which we command almost about 55% market share in the country, this is manufactured through, through a technology which is known as direct forming technology in which we are saving a lot of time, in which we are saving on, uh, on our steel, uh, steel input. So the same saving goes to the customer, you know. So in brief, on the technological front, on the logistics front, on the large economies of scale, we pass on the, we pass on the benefit to the ultimate customer, you know. So we are into pipes for almost all the applications, be it plumbing, be it HVAC, be it irrigation, uh, be it uh, water transmission, be it uh, midstream, uh, downstream in oil and gas industry. So <clears throat> this, these are the basic applications in which we are manufacturing pipes. Now coming to the Answering to your second question, how we can add value to the major infrastructural projects in the country. Now, about a year and a half back, we have forayed into uh, structural tube solutions, you know. Uh, many of my friends who are here, uh, uh, they, they would have watched uh, my company's video yesterday, uh, how we uh, in, in just a matter of 150 days, how we uh, erected seven hospitals in Delhi last year, you know. And had it been a conventional methodology of construction, it would have taken, uh, Mr. Bhatti, it would have taken two and a half years. But we did it in 150 days time, you know, based on our uh, latest foray since last one and a half, uh, one and a half year. So, <clears throat> how, can, how can APL Apollo help? APL Apollo can help uh, in, in uh, designing and optimizing your, your uh, civil infrastructural projects uh, by way of tubular construction. We already have demonstrated to Delhi government and since this is a metro and a rail event, uh, I feel very proud to share that about 10 to 12 major stations in India 
we are designing on on uh, tubular construction now it's a well known fact uh, tubular construction is very very speed oriented is very quality uh, oriented its durability seismic loading plus plus the carpet carpet area additional which you get to the extent of 2.5% so on an overall basis we save to the customer we we are adding value addition to most of the infrastructure projects today we almost have about 200 uh, projects on which we are working this includes uh, indian railways this includes uh, data centers healthcare and uh, real estate and we are soon to uh, take off very we will be taking off very very soon enough you know so this is how we are creating a uh, value addition uh, in infrastructural construction by speeding up the by speeding up the construction as well as saving time for the customer his his uh, value for money and providing value addition to the ultimate client you know have thank i answered your question thank mr bhati uh, you have really explained both of the questions asked in one question i think our one of the panel member shri s sevanathan has also come yeah we would love to have him on board with us and he has come all the way from bangalore for this inno metro really truly we are blessed to have him here so can you please join us on the stage with a huge round of applause from everybody we have shri s shivamadhan he is director finance bmrcl so we are very glad to have you on board uh, can we have nadin shah sir here on the stage to welcome him with the bouquet of flowers Thank you. Thank you for so much for being here. Now we can resume the panel. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Sivanathan sir, you are ready now? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Ms. S. Sivanathan is director of finance BMRCL. He is having 32 years experience in DMRC and has worked in DMRC MMRCL in DMRC he was associated with arranging of funds from JICA and has visited Japan as member government of India delegation for phase 2 project of DMRC sir my question is financing of major infrastructure projects involve a very high investment long gestation periods high sunk costs social and environment issues etc as per your experience what could be the possible changes required in the present financing system both at national and international level mr shiva mathan thank you sir very good afternoon at the outset i my apologies for late joining there are a lot of logistic issues after reaching landing in t3 the question raised to me is that what are the alternative funding mechanism for big infrastructure project as is as the panelist correctly puts it metro rail sector or uh, rrts or railway all are uh, capital intensive projects they need huge uh, initial investment and even after investing so much of uh, capex the opex from the opex whether the project is able to generate enough cash inflows so that the funds raised maybe what a loan or multilateral or domestic loan in the case of ppp project is serviceable or not that's the big challenge i have the experience of delhi metro and nagpur metro and now bangalore all these metro rail projects are 
50-50 JV between government of India and concerned state government. Here the big advantage is that everybody can say that uh, you are getting the fund from ODA like uh, Japan or uh, AFD or KFW like that. But if you see the actual outgo, if I add the exchange variation for a 30 years period, JICA loan and 20 years for uh, EIB or KFW or AFD loan, the cost of borrowing will be not less than domestic borrowing. But the main advantage is that at the construction stage, funds are tied up so that project is completed and given to the public in a shortest period of time. And uh, the basic reason why government and uh, all metro rail projects are going for ODA or uh, multilateral funding is that in India now, as of now, the funding agencies are not funding for uh, beyond 15, 10 years or 15 years. In, earlier, they were not lending for more than 50, 10 years. Now they are coming out with 10, 15 years and 20 years. So this was the reason government thought of that we should go for ODA and multilateral funding. The new metro rail policy has envisaged various models under percentage funding by government of India, 50-50 JV between government of India and concerned state government, under percentage state government, PPP project, private initiative, etc. All these models have their own advantages and disadvantages. If I take the under percentage funding by government of India. In this case, yes, we agree that the project is funded fully by government of India and the funds are tied up. But the problem is that most of the activities, because the metro rail sector, if I take metro rail sector, it is a social sector project and it comes under the state, urban transport sector. So involvement of state government is paramount. Unless and otherwise state government involvement is there. Like land acquisition, state government is involved. Tree cutting permission, state government is uh, involved. Utility diversion, state government is involved. So all this act, for all these activities, support of state government is required. So at least from this point of view, this involvement of state government in addition to government of India's uh, contribution is must. And if we take the entirely funded by state government, we know the financials of state government. Unless and otherwise state central government's support is there, the funding from any of the multilateral ODA funding agencies is difficult to get, except MMRDA because they are having their own balance sheet strength. They are getting the funding. But this is not the case in all other metro. In the case of Jaipur metro, what happened is that Though it was taken as a initially state government initiative, they took the ADB loan and online to Jaipur Metro at nil rate of interest. Total exchange rate, rate variation was to the state government. So, so much of sweetener has to be given to make the project viable during the operation. See, I can say I am in this field for the last 15 years or so. Getting funding for CapEx is easy. But once we start the operation, servicing the loan, it's really a big issue. Yesterday I received a call from MOVA. We, Bangalore Metro, with the help of government of Karnataka, we are servicing the loan. Not even a single penny was uh, defaulted. But yesterday I received a uh, call from MOVA saying that whatever the amount CTPLA has paid to the funding agency in terms of INR, and what we paid in terms of INR to government of India, there is a difference of 400 crore. Then we explained them, this is because of exchange rate variation. This has to be, because we, we have been given the PTA, pass-through assistance, which is equivalent to INR at that time. Take the example of Jaikalon, 30 years. I was in the another conference, I was speaking to PFC official. If I take the edging cost, edging is available only for five years, not beyond five years. And even this edging cost is vary from currency to currency. In the case of J uh, Japanese N, for five years, the edging cost is around four and a half percentage. And in the case of dollar, it is about three and a half percentage. In the case of euro, it is about four percentage. It is not same. And when I take the 
30 years loan and during the 30 years period, whatever I have to pay, if I factored in the exchange rate variation, the liability will become only, uh, very huge. And as per the current accounting standard, I have to book the exchange variation as expenditure in my p and account. I am not allowed to capitalize. If I take this as an expenditure in my p and account, you see, no metro will be in, even in operation, uh, the cash, uh, cash surplus. We can say that we are in operational profit. We are able to meet whatever the operating expenditure, like salary and wages, energy and maintenance. But if I take even servicing of interest alone, after taking this exchange rate, exchange rate variation, no metro, including public, including DMRC, will not be in a cash surplus. So under this circumstance, the possible alternative mechanism could be involvement of city government, like MMRDA, or in the case of Delhi DDA, or in the case of Bangalore, we are very fortunate to have a, uh, we are constructing one uh, line which is going up to Bangalore International Airport. There the Bayal, Bangalore International Airport Limited is funding. They are constructing two metro stations within the airport premises at their cost. And they are funding about 850 crore through PPP, back-end PPP mechanism for which we, have, we are leasing the assets to them and they will be getting the increased uh, user uh, charges from the era. And from that, they will be paying us over a period of 15 years. Not It will not be come as uh, upfront. It will come over a period of 15 years. So with this, we will be in a position to repay the loan. Apart from that, in Bangalore Metro, another thing what happened is that we are involving corporates in a big way, like Infosys, Biocon, large in uh, real estate sector. What they, what they are coming forward through the CSR fund saying that this, the construction of this metro station which is located near to their office, they will fund. And in lieu of that, we are giving them uh, station naming right for 35 years. They are paying upfront amount and also they want that the station should be international standard. Whatever the actual cost, they are bearing. So through this mechanism, we are able to generate about 950 odd crore. And from back-end PPP from Bayel, another 850 crore, plus two stations free of cost. So these are all the alternative funding mechanism we have to keep in mind whenever we aim or we are planning or we are preparing the DPR for big infrastructure project. So every method is having its own advantage and disadvantage. If I take the PPP project, two of the project, uh, one is uh, Delhi Airport and another is... Uh, uh, even Rapid Metro, which was totally private initiative. Both have been taken over by Delhi Metro. Over, uh, Rapid Metro was handed over by government of Andhra, Ariana to Delhi Metro. And the airport line was taken over by Delhi Metro because they were the sponsor, they were the authority. So the, 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 the conclusion, the inference which I'm drawing is that when the Metro, yes, 50-50 JVs are getting ODA loan at a soft term, not able to service the loan. What to think about the private operator who are taking loan at much higher rate? And the kind of comfort, the kind of uh, facility which we are going to get from state government and all is not there. So PPP, to really to attract PPP, government has to make big changes in VGF. Presently they are paying 50, 40 percentage. But the aggressive bidders are quoting very aggressively and even in the case of uh, LNT Hyderabad, they have quoted less than 20 percentage VGF when it is permitted up to 40 percentage. So just to grab the project, they are very aggressively quoting and, at the, at the, and finally they will be in a financial mess. So my advice would be that even if private sectors are coming in, analyze the project and go through the DPR, do, the, do your own analysis about uh, projected ridership, whether it is overestimated or optimistic or underestimated. And CapEx, in, in every DPR you can see that, as far as my experience goes, CapEx is underestimated, ridership is overestimated. And we have to go to the government for uh, revision the cost. So to avoid all these things, if, it, if we have to succeed in uh, bringing more and more private participation, definitely we have to 
as an investor because nobody is coming to do the charity. Everybody is coming to do the business and earn profit. So taking that into account, they have to evaluate the DPR, go to the site and see whether this alignment is really going to get so much of readership. And then they should participate. Just to grab the business, pad up the cost at the time of construction and running away will make the sponsoring authority, authority or concession authority in a big financial suit. So this is what my submission. Thank you very much. Well explained, sir. In fact, sir, I have worked in three metros, Noida to Greater Noida Metro, Pune Metro and Jaipur Metro. For nearly more than three years plus, I was in Jaipur Metro and you have mentioned about Jaipur Metro also. I know the ground rarities. And whatever you have explained, it is a fact in fact. Okay. Now we are having one member from Niti Yog, and we are aware that unless the Niti Yog give approval, it is just impossible that any project can move further. We are having Shri M. Vijay Kumar, Joint Advisor, Infrastructure Connectivity, Niti Ayog. Mr. Vijay Kumar is 28 years experience in planning commission in PPP, energy, the railways, and metro rail projects. Executive level experience in steel industry and in transport vertical. He is BE and MBA from Department of Management Studies at IIT, Bachelor of Laws from Delhi University and a postgraduate in public policy from MDI Gurugama. Very qualified officer. Sir, my first question. How PPP projects will prove key drivers of Prime Minister Gati Shakti scheme and what are its implications? Sir Vijay Kumar. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bhatia ji. Uh, you see, they, uh, uh, recently government come up with a PM uh, Gati Shakti uh, Yojana scheme. In PM Gati Sakti Yojana, it is near about 100 lakh crore rupees envisaged uh, in recent five years to implement the uh, projects in fast manner, especially infrastructure projects. But unfortunately, the urban transport uh, projects are not presently not included in the Gati Sakti programs. If you take a PPP, Sar has already explained, there are uh, uh, three metros, example, uh, uh, Delhi airport line and Mumbai line and Hyderabad metro. Uh, three were tried to implement through PPP. But there is a, a challenge for uh, user fees recovery. Then how, how you, user, why you are not, one is there estimation during the DPR level, uh, what, how much ridership will you get, whether it is a MRTS, a met like metro rail is a suitable for that uh, uh, PHPT 80,000 or 60,000 or if you are estimating only it is a 10,000 uh, or 20,000 uh, as Sar told if you just grab the project you uh, simply uh, hike the ridership and uh, get the project it is a problem but still there is a, a possibility that because uh, this uh, private people can be able to bring the new technology and they can deliver you good uh, working uh, working culture and they will always think to make a profit of your metro they will do each and every activities to how to make the metro profit but as it is for uh, uh, for that if you, to, if you give the project to private people through ppp there must be solid uh, tension area development program and uh, land use patents, and as metro policy highlighted, uh, unified metropolitan transport authority has to be created. There should be common mobility plan, or TOD, transit orient development. All this, if you able to integrate, then only private person can have the systematic program as well as investment. And another question is that, which area will you give it to uh, private people for uh, 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 and over the project. Whether will you give it to operation and uh, maintenance or will you give them uh, to construct the metro through civil structures and if you give the civil, st uh, civil structure, there is a problem. It is followed in the Delhi metro system. But we have to identify and risk has to be shared properly with the 
both the party. Ultimately, what some of the panelists told, uh, private entities entering into make the money and to satisfy the shareholders. If you, your project is not able to deliver these things, uh, then it is very difficult to the, uh, implement the project through PPP. But there is a scope. Uh, viability funding may be enhanced. And uh, state government should uh, come up with a proper plan. Because land is with the state government, then how they will hand over? And how will you create the compactness in the near the metro stations and uh, alignment? So that uh, more people can work and uh, travel to home through metro and what type of uh, comforts? Uh, will you give apart from the existing? There is a lift is there, and getting out of the metro and reaching home. Somehow you are getting uh, e-rickshaws, autos, and aggregators, uh, Ola, Uber. But while from the home out, will you reach the uh, metro stations? These are the things. Ultimately, we have to uh, properly and honestly estimate the riderships and uh, what will be your program for uh, during next five years, 10 years, how we will increase the ridership. It is a uh, play a very important role. Uh, I hope in future government will modify the uh, concession agreements suitably to attract the private player because uh, you will see the investment in the metro, uh, more than 50% of MOUD money is taking, uh, take, uh, taking care by uh, metros only. Then uh, how they will spend in other areas? So there is a, uh, question arises how long this kind of uh, uh, payment will be made by MOUD through government money. So we have to find out some alternate solution that is uh, easily available through PPP. Or uh, it is uh, whether your metro rail is suitable or some other like metro light or uh, LRT is uh, uh, suitable for in near future to decongest the cities. Uh, these are the under the talk. I hope, sir. Thank you, sir. Well said, sir. Well said. Uh, sir, you are also aware, uh, Vijay Kumar ji, you are also aware that Smart Metro Conference is likely to be held in Czech Republic in October 23. And uh, it is learned that lot of experts from Metro, Tram, Light Rail, etc. will be attending this conference. And the topic of the conference is signaling, smart signaling and automation, model shift data connection, predictive maintenance, accessibility, building information, modeling, and asset management. My question is, the success of any metro is the self-sustainability. Then, in absence of last mile connectivity and multimodal integration, can smart metro be solution for any city when metro is cost intensive and sustainability is a big challenge. Because you are working in Niti Metro, Niti Ayog and have handled so many metro projects, and I think you will be best person to reply this answer question. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Actually, nowadays everybody mind uh, question arises whether this metro MRT system is sustainable in long run or not. If you see the construction cost. Uh, metro cons uh, construction cost, mostly civil construction costs, as well as borrowing from the money from the multilateral banks and the obligation of the borrower that uh, metro rail companies towards the multilateral banks uh, and uh, rider ridership realization. After some time, uh, the estimated ridership realization and recovery of the, your cost. Unless until you create sustainable cash flows in future, then how long will you will get the grant from the banks? It is again a questionable. But at the same time, it is very much is sustainable because while framing the policy, government India, government of India knows that metro may not be uh, make uh, requisite uh, cash flows in future. So while granting the project, uh, government never see the financial uh, returns or financial rate of the metro. Uh, metro projects. We see only economic returns of the metro projects. It is stated that 14% of the economic rate of return of the me uh, uh, for metro projects. But here comes is whether it is a notional or real uh, rate of economic return. We have sometimes it is also questionable. But government is giving only to look into the economic rate of the uh, rate for the sanctioning the metro projects. So another thing, uh, Ministry of Urban uh, uh, MOVA as well as uh, Nidhi Ayok jointly prepared the benchmark of the metro cost systems because the cost of the metros varies from the lowest cost Noida metro, 183 kilometer uh, per kilometer, crore per kilometer, and up until uh, it goes up to 350 crores per kilometer also. Uh, 
uh, then uh, we have uh, then we have, we have op optimized the cost benchmark that it is up to the metro uh, project proposer people then uh, uh, companies then how uh, they will select the project it is there is no stringent method that you have to select this much of uh, uh, per kilometer cost only but there is a possibility that optimizing the uh, test and distance and uh, non filled stations uh, and you see by constructing per kilometer by through Indian Railways, it takes only 12 crore rupees. In road, it takes uh, 5 crore rupees without any st terminals, station or something. So is it necessary that you will go for uh, 200 crore rupees or uh, re uh, innovate uh, some rolling stock so that uh, uh, it can uh, construct it uh, like uh, ordinary Indian Railway system, uh, 12 crore rupees uh, at, at grade or uh, elevated something, then it is uh, our choice. Another thing also, our uh, metro system clearly uh, stipulated you, are, you have to establish the OMTA. Many state government still, uh, they are go going to establish, very few states already established. And uh, another thing, there are uh, uh, proper integration with the other uh, transport systems. That is very essential. If you see the NCR, we have around uh, 40 million, uh, uh, 40 million plus populations. Uh, but uh, we have the ridership only 40 lakh. Then what happens? Other people, how they are moving uh, through office or home, hospital, all, all these things. Then how to catch aggressive marketing uh, th these things. And uh, uh, value capture finance and uh, land uh, finance, like uh, Japan and other places, uh, even Hong Kong and all, they properly integrated the land and uh, uh, making compactness. More people live through the rear railway lines. So these are the things, uh, we, uh, definitely, uh, if you do all these things, uh, metro, metro is a very sustainable. But nowadays, government is planning to go for a lighter metro system because it takes only one-fourth of the cost of the regular metro system. But uh, all the time, we cannot see cost also because we, we have to see pro-public policy. Present government also view pro-public policy. Public has to face the convenient uh, mode of transportation, clean, the seven C's PM always uh, mentioning uh, 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 while talking about the transport system. So uh, it will continue to be a sustainable metro system. Uh, metro rail system it will be sustainable in India, no doubt in that. But only thing is that we have to increase the uh, non-fair revenues and project cost drastically has to be cut down. This cannot go tunnel or uh, very big, uh, 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 very beautiful stations. No, these are taking the cost. And uh, another the electrical signal, signal also, uh, DMRC is developing the uh, uh, CBTC, communication-based uh, metro system, to reduce the headway. And even uh, our headway is around three minutes or something. In Europe, if you go to Europe, it is uh, one or two minutes. You cannot catch the train in next platform. But whether we will have that much of people coming metro so that I need uh, su such a less uh, headways. So all these things uh, will help if you properly plan. No doubt in that, government will continue to grant the metro. It is 100% sustainable, no doubt in that. At the same time, we have to make ourselves uh, to try to generate a cash flows for a long run uh, so, do not, uh, uh, so that we cannot uh, burden the government of India, so that we will become self-sustainable. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Outstanding, outstanding, sir. Sir, uh, in your reply, you have mentioned about uh, Noida metro, that is cost is uh, nearly 180 crore per kilometer. The reason being was it was only 27 meter Jugad, that is why this cost is less. When we are having 3 meter segments, then the cost per kilometer for elevated is coming nearly 250 crore rupees per kilometer and for underground it is varying from 300 to 350 crores per kilometer. Now we are having the last panel member, Mr. Karan Singh, he is the youngest and bus question is very important, sir. Okay. Mr. Karan Chethi, he is AVP Infrastructure Railways in West India. He is chartered accountant with nine years experience, strategic advisory, international taxation, investment mergers, acquisition, valuation, commercial tax, and financial modeling, etc. Mr. Sethi, my question is, what are the innovative funding mechanisms and revenue streams that can be employed to add to the financial viability of metro and MRTS projects in the country. Testing, can you hear me? I think this is okay. 
Thank you, Mr. Bhatti, for the, for the question and thank you to the organizers for having me a part of this esteemed panel. I think, uh, like Sir mentioned, I'm the youngest and I think uh, all the experienced, uh, you know, uh, behemoths of the industry have already covered a lot of these aspects. So I won't take too much time in the interest of, interest of time. But um, I, I, I think when it comes to innovative funding mechanisms, first of all, I think it's, it's, it's worth lauding the efforts of the government, both at the center and the state, in terms of, you know, how they've really taken it upon themselves to meet the requirements of the growing new urban India that we often speak of, you know. I think metros are forming the backbone of uh, transit systems in the cities. Uh, however, I think in the last few years, one example that I would like to quote here, I know we've tried this in the past, of having an equity uh, investor, you know, from the private sector uh, in the country. Uh, but over the last few years, in our experience, and we talked to a lot of uh, sovereign wealth funds, and we've seen some funds such as, you know, the Canadian Pension Fund, CDPQ, actually back two metro projects as an equity investor at the, at the beginning of the project itself. The examples are Sydney Metro and then another light rail system in Quebec City. So I, I think like, uh, you know, sir very well mentioned, I think the whole, the whole, I think issue or the crux of a PPP partnership is striking that balance, you know, but, but I think uh, in the past also whenever, whenever, uh, you know, the states or India has tried uh, certain unbundled aspects such as PPP rolling stock or maybe the station redevelopment done by railways, I think we have seen enough traction uh, from the market. And I, think, and I think if we are able to strike that balance, because going forward, I think the need and the requirement of these systems is only going to grow as India grows, you know. So I think, and I know that everyone here is in critical positions and is trying to strike that balance, but, but we do see a lot of traction from investors, especially long-term infrastructure investors looking for stable revenues in today's time where India is a bit of a bright spot in the world economy. Uh, and I think if we're able to strike that, uh, we, could, we could still see some transactions come into light. Also in my, in my very short experience, I always feel that it's a matter of cracking that first, uh, you know, uh, first project on, on PPP and then it sort of helps to apply that to other similar projects as well. Uh, on, the, on the innovative, uh, you know, revenue stream standpoint, I think, I think everyone stressed on how important it is to have this sweetener in form of commercial real estate because that helps unlock not just infra fund players, but also commercial real estate players who could then come on board and, and reap the rewards of that. But, you know, just, just as an off-hand radical suggestion, I think, I think that we've also actually been talking to a lot of e-commerce or logistics players. I'm one of them actually mentioned how about in non-passenger operational hours move, you know, move parcel service on the trains. Because these, these trains and the metro systems are in key urban centers and especially with the growth of next day delivery, in fact, a couple of hours delivery systems now with e-commerce, I think, I think that could be, or similar models could be explored. So I think it'll be great to engage with the various industries in the, I, I know that we set up these projects as a social, social obligation, but in order to make them more commercially viable, I think it'll be great to have the industry is also sort of pitching in, coming to us, rather than just the infra players or the rolling stock providers, but the other industries as well, and maybe help unlock certain ideas which could be explored. I think Thank I'll keep it much. short. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. Sethi. In fact, yeah, I am having a lot of questions, but because I know everybody is waiting for the lunch, I am skipping those questions. I will Mr. give only 30 seconds to Mr. Rakesh Prashad, if he wants to say something, not more than one minute, sir. Then this Thank panel you. discussion will Thank be you. over. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, as I was, uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Bhatti. As I was sharing, that APL Apollo uh, uh, is offering the tubular construction solutions, which is a buzzword today. And it's a game changer, to be very honest. It's a game changer in the construction industry. So, um, through this platform, I would very humbly like to invite all my panelist members and anybody who, who is interested from the audience on May 30th uh, at uh, O'Brien's, 6 p.m. onwards, the session will be attended by top people from the government, Ministry of Housing, Railways, Aviation, and the top architects, urban planners from Delhi. So he I have an invitation for everybody in the, in the room over here. Anybody who is interested, uh, you know, my stall is right there. Uh, 
you can let me know and i'll be too happy to uh, have you and i'll be sending you a personal invitation to attend the show thank you thank, thank you, you very Mr. much Part. i thank you all the panelists they have replied well thank you very much madam did this i concluded thank you so much can we have a huge round of applause for all the speakers can i order? have excuse me just one question for one minute is okay uh, uh maybe is we can have it one to one well, no just one minute for all actually this question relate okay. to each member present here uh, can't we name the station by brand like one station name apollo and we can get the money yearly yeah. so that part is already happening uh, specifically in the name that is we call as a naming right so that is what happening uh, in uh, majority of the metro authorities are doing that thank you i actually i didn't seen it so i so we it. look forward for you to uh, take up maybe, any maybe. specific my station. company is milton so i maybe yeah <laughs> thank you thank you for that quick question and uh, now i would request uh, mr padmanabh dk hod sales and marketing vanatrans uh, india to kindly come up on the stage to felicitate the speakers can we have you sir mr dk you all can raise and come forward yes so we'll start uh, from mr karan sethi avp infrastructure railways in west india Thank you, Mr. Sethi. And now we would love to felicitate Shri S. Shiva Mathan, Director of Finance, BMRCL. Can we have the memento for him? So the next memento has to be for Shri M. Vijay Kumar, Joint Advisor, Infrastructure Connectivity, Niti Aayog. Now we'll take uh, leave from Mr. D K. Thank you so much for being here, sir. Uh, can I request Mr. R A Rajiv to join me on the stage to felicitate other speakers? And we will start with Mr. Sulab Goel, Director, Strategy and Transactions, E Y. Please stay back as we are looking forward to have a group photo as well. After him, can we have Mr. Rakesh Prashad, Head Strategic Business Development and Marketing, APL Apollo. and the moderator of the panel shri jugal kishor bhatti former agm at rites right can we have shri jugal kishor bhatti ji thank you can we have a group photo gentlemen together yes you all can come forward for a group photo <laughs> 